Every single click is where I show 99.9% .9 of the clicks in an Hearts of Iron 4 game. The German Reich, but democratic. That's right. You can oppose Mr. H and you can form a Republic of Germany in the 1930s. And to say how much of a radical change ideologically this is, it is unbelievably easy. And how do you do it? Well, it's just one focus all the way to the right. Oppose Mr. H and all those bills you've racked up. Well, we're going to forgive all of the debt. Anyway, so this video is going to be where I show most of the clicks in a game where I'm playing an alt history path for Germany. And I'll try and show as much of the game mechanics as possible. Go a little bit more in depth than some of the ones you may not know as much about. And hopefully maybe teach you a little bit how to play Hearts of Iron 4. This video is possible by Fume. Stopping anything sucks. If you want to work with a bad habit, why not just remove the bad from the habit? Fume is an innovative ward wing device that does just that. Fume is completely natural and vapor free. Uses flavored air instead of harmful, nasty chemicals. And also comes in lots of natural, delicious flavors. And it'd be no surprise to you that Fume has over 150,000 customers with thousands of success stories. And you could be one of them. Join Fume today and break up those destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head over to tryfume.com forward slash feedback gaming or scan the QR code and use the code feedback gaming to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today and see if it could benefit you. Tryfume.com and use the code feedback gaming to save an additional 10% off your order. Thank you again, Fume, for sponsoring today's video. So national focuses, as you can see here, this is the national focus path we're going to choose. Here you can pick your industry, pick your ideology, as well as pick some of the things that can boost your military and your army. In this case, we're going to go for the alternative history path for Germany, which is oppose, oppose Mr. H. So with every holy game, my advice is go across the top of the screen and care about all these buttons. Luckily in this game, we don't actually care about them as much as we would normally because lots of them are not even going to matter, which we'll show very soon. So we're about to get a civil war when this focus completes in 70 days. So I'm going to do shift, left click on the divisions, assign them to an army with a right click and convert them all to the crappiest division we've got, which in this case is the horse. I'm going to click OK. That means every single division here has been converted over. Alrighty then, we convert them all to horses. The way the civil war works, and it works kind of the same way with every nation that has a civil war, is the armed forces get divided up between the two sides. However, the AI doesn't change the division template once the civil war is kicked off. Now I think about it, I don't think the AI ever changed its divisions. I think it just trains fresh ones and it updates the template. And with that in mind, that means you can kind of tilt the AI by giving them a kind of crappy division, in this case, the horse. I mean, it's not exactly the worst division, but it's not great either. All right, next up, we're going to focus on research. So research, you get four slots. That means you can research four things simultaneously. In this case, we're going to go for just basic industry. This is like the standard opening to every hobby game. The reason why you go for this is it just gives you your industry that you want to kickstart. Most hobby games go in two phases. It's the build-up phase, the preparation phase, and then the war phase. If you go for more industry stuff, in the preparation phase, they'll be more prepared for the war phase by having more factories. Does that make sense? Then what we're going to do is focus on an artillery soft attack build. Something kind of simple, simple that's kind of easy to follow along with. I think what we'll do that is go for this one. Now, interwar artillery is interesting because this gives the equipment that you have to produce, which gives the stats. Now, this one on the land doesn't give you the equipment, the actual raw equipment. It just gives us a bonus to soft attack for everything. So this one, you have to produce it to gain the stats. This one just gives it instantly on research. Plus, it gives some other pieces of equipment for tanks, but we'll worry about that later. We're going to focus on the artillery. What I just did there, by the way, is assign a Mayo. And what that means is a Mayo gains XP and consumes a little bit of political power. And it gives you a boost of funding when that research is done, which gives you XP towards Mayos. We'll talk about Mayos when we come to them. All right, then. Free civilian factories. I know the way this civil war is going to go. Germany gets split right down the middle, east and west. A little bit more gets given to the German Reich in the east. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build mills in these two locations. At the start of the game, we get MIFO builds, which gives a 25% boost to military construction. Plus, you've also got 10% to military construction as well. So that means you're going to get a big boost for these said regions. Some fascist nations in Hoi start off with mobilization. 
normally you'd but want to start off with infrastructure then transition onto factories but in this circumstance because it's a weird wonky start that's the reason why we play it a little bit differently we don't need to assign our air force we don't need to assign our navy uh resources is not really a big deal as it stands let's sort out our production and for the most part the production is going to be wonky as well i think what we'll do is get rid of the tanks get rid of the planes i hate to do this uh, i'm sorry this triggers everyone but i'm gonna delete all those ships even the ones that were 95 percent produced tell me how mad you are in the comments and all the other mills are going to get signed on to the artillery and if you hover over this, you can see that we're suffering from a 20% reduction of production of artillery due to the lack of tungsten. If you go here, you can actually see it. In this case, we'll import a little bit from Malaysia, which requires no convoys because there's a lack direct land connection between Malaysia and Germany. Why would this be a thing? It doesn't really make sense, does it? Malaysia's here, Germany's here. But the most profitable route is going to be lie land. It doesn't make sense. But regardless, it's better because it means that we're not going to have our convoys intercepted at sea. And plus, it doesn't cost us any convoys to assign this. But you're always better off with a land connection than you are better off with a uh, one that you've got to well, move convoys over. Alrighty then. And that's it. We can go five speed by either pressing five on the keyboard or clicking the fifth notch here. And then you can click space and also click on the unpause here. And there you go. We're going to go five speed. At this point, once again, it doesn't really matter with all the other setup. Normally, I'd train my planes. Normally, I'd move my ships around. Normally, I'd move my infantry around by garrisoning them. But in this circumstance, it's not going to matter. So when the Civil War starts, all these divisions, air wings and ships are going to magically teleport. There is a little bit of a cheesy exploit we're going to do with this, where it's a little bit of a mid-maxing, cheesy style strategy. And we're going to end up banking a lot of political power to do that. It'll become clear in the near future. All right, the Weimark, the army, challenges Mr. H. Boom, we have the Civil War. So there's two things that's happened here. We've still got all the horses, but also if you hold shift and left click on this and then assign them to another army, you have 24 of these infantry here. They're very, very weak, but it doesn't matter. What we'll do is convert this to a proper infantry template. If we go into army and recruit, you can actually see what this template is. Once again, this isn't the best, but it works. And what we'll do now is shift left click on each of these two armies, click on the field marshal, assign a field marshal. Who have we got? We've got some interesting fellas here. I think we'll go for Gunther. And then we'll also assign generals. What I want to look for is an engineer. Engineer. Now, there's something I always forget about. I've done this dozens of times. If you find someone who's an engineer, but not a part of the officer corps, you can give him a new trait. And that trait is an artillery specialist, which gives a massive boost for artillery as a part of your divisions. It kind of works a lot like uh, infantry specialist. So you're always wondering, like, if I've got a 7-2 division, is it going to benefit from attack from infantry specialists? Or is it going to benefit from the artillery of the artillery? Well, it's proportional. If the proportion of the division uh, is artillery, well, that's the percentage of the bonus you'll get. And the same applies for infantry. Uh, they've dumbed it down. They made it a lot easier. In the past, you had to make it all infantry to get the bonus or all artillery to get the bonus. But all artillery, artillery only, who thought that was a good idea? Well, that would never work. So in that case, that's the reason why artillery specialist now is worthwhile. It's got a re weird requirement though. It's you need fortress buster. And to get fortress buster, you need engineer. We're gonna go for this guy and just get him on. Bump him down, get the engineer. And then eventually when he gets to level four, we can make him a part of the officer corps, spend some command power. And then if you go into the high command, you can assign him here. And that's how you recruit people, give them desk jobs as a part of your high command. Anyway, engineer, type it in here. Eng, you find the engineer. This guy is also already a part of the officer corps. So that means he will never be able to give him a different office job because he is already a mobile warfare specialist, which will make no difference. So in this case, it doesn't really apply. In this case, we're going to go for which one could we go for this guy or this guy? To be fair, they're both pretty good. And we'll, you know what? Why not both? Why not both, right? And boom. All right. I'm going to hold, I'm going to press Z now, which is, I'll, I'll show it by clicking on it. I don't usually do this, but front line is here, but the hotkey for this is Z or Z if you're British or American. 
And if you hold shift and left click on the front line, you make a field marshal front line. Alternatively, if you're going to do Z and then left click, this is a field marshal general front line, which is equally divided between generals based on the amount of divisions they've got. Now, as the front lines push forward, you tend to find the front lines here kind of go working in weird, wonky ways. So there's a reason why I don't usually tend to go for this. However, the more time goes on, I've noticed this becomes more and more effective. But just be aware, this style of front line requires more micromanagement than this front line. And the only difference is, is you're holding shift when you click the field marshal and you drop the front line down. Then we do X to make a an attack order, which is important for planning bonus. And then everyone is going to move forward. I'm going to unpause, control B, and everyone's going to railway to the front line now. And then I don't think we we're really going to bother with the Navy, but all the Air Force, we're going to assign them onto this general. Do the order of air superiority, close air support, and press G to merge. And then they'll automatically move over from there. All right, we've got some political power. First thing we're going to spend it on is total mobilization. The total mob is amazing. It means the minimum amount of consumer goods of 10%, plus you get a massive 30% bonus to construction speed for military factories. Amazing. The only downside to this is it eats into your recruitable population. And if you look really there, minus 3% recruitable, we're on at 2.5%. So that'll put us at zero manpower, meaning we'll not be able to expand our armed forces. So that means we are forced to go for extensive conscription, which we will do that naturally. Regarding national focuses, I don't think there's anything to select from here. I guess we could do army innovations in the meantime. No, we're not going to select a focus because remember, when you don't select a focus, you gain double political power per day. The base amount of political power is one per day. However, if you don't select a national focus, you'll gain two per day. And if you hover over them, you can actually see the breakdown there. You can see the Mayo is eating into a little bit of the political power gain. All right. In this case, I think we're all good to go. I think we have to give them an order. No, we've already given them an order. That's good. All right, let's pause. Let's go. Four speed, space, go. Off we go. Get them onto the front line. And we are in a good spot now. I'm going to go five speed a little bit and get a little bit of planning bonus. Overall, if you look, the entrenchment's 15%, but the maximum planning bonus is 38%. So that kind of implies a, little, a bit of a more of a defensive advantage when actively in combat. I'm going to move around our production queue here because we've lost half of our military factories. We've had to redistribute all of these. Now, this is a civil war. You probably think to yourself, like, how are you going to win this? Well, surprisingly, it's easy because if you look at our leader, he has a massive 20% attack and defense on core territory bonus. Absolutely huge. So in this case, it's one of these kind of wars where it's really difficult to lose. Very difficult to lose. And just activate the battle plan, use your air force, and off you go. For the most part, this civil war is on autopilot now. I personally think that this bonus is too good, and this civil war needs to be a little bit more difficult. Hey, but listen, that's my personal opinion. You can disagree with it, but you're just wrong. This icon up here says, air wings with no mission assigned. I'm going to guess this is a naval bomber. And it is, yeah. So if you want to, you could do a naval strike, but you're destroying your own navy that you're going to get back later on anyway. So it's kind of pointless. But anyway, four speed. Let's keep going. Let's see what damage we can do. We don't need as much tungsten anymore, so we'll fix that. As you can see, we're producing loads of juicy artillery. Keep an eye on your construction queue, because as you lose land, things get damaged as you go. And it's just because that's a mechanic of like, well, civil wars are messy. It destroys the economy. From my opinion, I don't think it destroys the economy enough. I think personally, I think Paradox should scale this up massively and civil wars should be so, so more destructive. Maybe like scale up the amount of damage to factories or infrastructure by like 10 or 20 times more just for armies that are in civil wars. I'd be for that because it, it feels to me like the Spanish nation recovers really quickly uh, during the civil war, which I think is kind of a bit weird. You know, we're going to rush for the next artillery. Now, this is ahead of time, meaning this is a 1939 technology being researched in 1936. And as you can hover over it here, it says we're suffering from a 500% penalty for construction time. However, this is an artillery heavy build we're going to go for. And in this circumstance, it's not worthwhile in the short term, but in the long run, it will pay back massively. Five speed. Off we go. And Maya has unlocked a trait. I'm going to do what I do in every single game. Get rid of this. Yeah, there we go. But what I'm going to do is go for the production bonus. So this one and this one. I'm holding shift, by the way. This production bonus too. And then I'm going to go for breakthrough, reliability, heart attack and breakthrough for artillery. Yes, yes, yes. Cue them all up in a row and therefore I don't have to worry about it. All right, we've got political power. Go for extensive conscription. Otherwise, you're going to zero out on your manpower. 
But remember, when the war ends, you're still going to have total mobilization. It's, it's a weird glitch. Your war support should technically drop all the way down at the end of the war, but it still stays up. And in that circumstance, you can still have an amazing economy just from riding total mob after the civil war which once again is weird in my opinion but there you go dispersed versus concentrated in the short run concentrated is better in the long run disperse is better i mean that's the short answer i can go more in complex into that if you really want to but overall disperse has never been as good as it used to be disperse in my fair all fairness i think actually concentrated in my honest opinion needs a buff uh, it should give more factories per state if buildings are really close together and it's concentrated surely that means you can pack more factories into a region so it should give more building slots that would make sense wouldn't it and it would give more incentive to go for that long term it's just really strange that you don't have the option i'm kind of nervous here that the front lines have split can you see this so what i'm gonna do is select the, the field marshal x right click and make sure there's a front line here i can also cancel the order and reactivate it just to make sure look at this guy he's leveled up to level four and he can now become an artillery specialist but i need first a fortress buster we're going to assign that by spending command power and then we can go for artillery specialists and then straight away you can assign him and there he is where is he there he is an artillery specialist you don't really find many of these in hoi 4 because it's kind of like the old meta isn't it? it's the old doctrine artillery focused armies were more of a world war one thing world war two moves towards armor anyway we're gonna assign a uh, army commander now which gives ticking army xp super important in the long run and you obviously know why all right once again the civil war is an autopilot and as you can see everything's damaged and everything's broke now once upon a time, someone told me that assigning these to the top of the repair queue is not the most efficient way of doing it. Now, if you want to, what you can do is assign this to the top and use your civilian factories to repair your civilian factories, giving more civilian factories. Yeah, I said civilian factories three times. However, from testing, and this little individual told me this, it's kind of better just to leave them here because they auto repair very slowly anyway. Uh, so my advice is to leave them and just continue with your base construction. I think what we'll do is we'll finish this off and then we'll make civilian factories from off the top of it. All right, research. I'm gonna go for construction too because we're trying to build that economy of early game as you do. As you can see, we are completely demolishing the Germans as Germany. That makes sense. The worst enemy of the Germans, Germany. I'm gonna make sure I close this pocket here. There's like a really weird spot on the map here. I'm right clicking to tell them to attack over just to make sure we clear out this boyo. See, every time a state falls to the German Republic, or in this case, the Junta, um, more factories get damaged, just the way it works. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, at the same time, I think we'll start making some civilian factories now. So I'll go for one here and one here. What I'm doing is holding shift, and that means if there's six slots here, it fills out all six slots. It just saves you six clicks. It just saves you a lot of time. And you can see it shifted it automatically to the top. And here we go. Now, at this point, there's not really much you can do. In all fairness, my advice is just let it run out. Let it do its normal thing and go from there. The black shirts have organized in the United Kingdom. Did you notice at the start of the game, I had historical turned on? But what's happened now is alternative paths have been happening around the world because I've gone for an alternative path. And that's hard-coded into the game mr h is deed if you want to speed up the civil war my advice is you can kind of beeline to the victory points just by right clicking on them but as you can see because of the 20 percent attack bonus you get from this guy your ability to lose this boy is actually kind of difficult it's hard to lose the war does that make sense is it hard to yes we're gonna go for the communist revolutionary I know you're probably thinking, what the hell? I thought you agreed you were going to go uh, Democratic. There is a reason for that. And I'll, at the very end of the video, you'll see it. And it'll just make the video kind of a little bit more interesting, a little bit different. Once again, I'm trying to make an entertaining video. It's not just meant to be a long ass tutorial. So that's boring. Anyway, we've got more mills back now, as you can see, because we're uh, repairing stuff. So I'm thinking to myself now, what do I want to focus on? I focus on the artillery. I guess what we could do is go for a little bit of AA. Yeah, we'll go for that. As you can see, the broken factories appear at the bottom. So what I usually do is shift this to the bottom and what I'm producing the most of, I'll let them take the blunt of the, the mills that aren't being used. But as you repair them later on, it won't be a big issue anyway. Boom, the civil war has ended and Germany is a mess. I'm gonna just do a garrison here, which is V, move everyone over. All the bonus divisions automatically disband and you're only left with 14 divisions. Now you've got a weird option here to what you wanna deal with the leftover of Mr. H's crew. Um, if you go for this bottom one and imprison them, later on, you do get the option 
to bring them back. And I'll show you that as a cool little Easter egg. It's just it's just a fun, fun little Easter egg. Don't, don't take it too seriously, okay? Just a bit of fun. All right, more research. And once again, working on production. Early game pays itself back in the long run. Production efficiency cap not only gives you production efficiency speed, but it also increases the maximum cap. You can see the cap if you go into production here, which is why. And you can see this bar. It increases the bar from the maximum cap of 60% up to 70% when that research is done, but it also increases the speed that you gain more production efficiency. And the number will go higher the further you are away from the cap. Overall, it's just more raw production, so win-win. I'm going to go F3 right now, which is the air map mode. Select everything. Right click here. Five speed it. Put them all here. G to merge. Hold shift left click and exercise everyone to level three. Cut that off as well. I'm going to select all of my navy. I drag a big box and press G and merge them all up. Assign a, an admiral. There we go. We'll send these guys to uh, this port. Done. All right. Modify the government. We've got another 150 political power. And in this case, we get an option to hire some more guys. In this case, I think we're going to go for this dude. The anti-F leader. F in the chat. Well, no F in the chat. F is definitely gone in the chat. Rip. All right. Focus is now. We can do a national focus and we can go down our ideological path, which in this case is secure a new state, which gives stability and clamps down on more F. F's definitely in the chat today, boys. So what a good phase is now, because it's more of a build-up phase, I'll move from making mills to making more civvies to build up my raw base economy. In this game, I think we've got loads of bonuses to building instruction. I think that comes a little bit later on. I think it's one of these ones, rebuild the nation. Okay, so you want to flip to your new ideology as quick as possible. So my advice to you is to start to get rid of the other ideologies. And in this case, we're going to do anti-communist raids, and then we'll do anti-fascist raids, which if anyone isn't aware of these, they give you a little bit more of your ideology that you want. You lose stability, but you end up with a net gain of plus two stability overall. So you lose 10% to gain 12. Does, does that make sense? Anyway, disperse industry is done. We're going to queue up some more civvies and make sure the ones at the top that are partially constructed are the ones that are going to finish next. We've got a new Mayo trait. In this case, we're going to focus on soft attack, production, production, all the stats. I'm just hitting shift and I'm just queuing them all up. Once again, focus on the ones that cost more and therefore the ones that can definitely pay most back in the long run. Once again, it's a quantity versus quality decision. That's all it is. Okay, we've secured the new state. Now we're going to go for the different ideology we can select. These two focuses are important because this is the monarchist path and this is the democratic path. The reason why I'm going the democratic path, I just want to do something different, okay? Please pick the path that you most enjoy and what you find the most fun, all right? I'm here to maximize your fun, all right? Do what you think is the best. What's that? What did that Doom account say? It's like a really famous tweet that the Doom account says. You control all the buttons that you press. It's so uh, blunt and straight to the point, but you can't complain about something if you choose never to press it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I found it. You control the buttons you press. The most based tweet. All right, more political power. Uh, in this case, I think we're going to do anti-fascist raids. So what I'm trying to do here is remove the ideologies that I don't want to gain more of the ideology that I want. So therefore I can go for the monarchist compromise quicker because you need 40% support for demo democracy. All right, we're going to train more army now. And uh, to do that, I think we're going to try and just build more of these guys up. Yeah, train as many as we can. I held shift to, to make sure we queue more of them up. I specifically say low priority of equipment. And then I basically select a location that I want them to be popped on the map. I can also assign them to a general if I want. Oh, if I had a general order. Oh, no, I can assign it to the field marshal. Okay, I didn't know that. And what it just means is all equipment will go to the army first. The exact existing standing army. And then secondly, it will go into the trained divisions. Here at first, and then here second. See, right now, I mean, the war is basically only a three months out. Right now, there's only one civilian factory that's left needs to be repaired. It's almost like the civil war didn't even happen. Wow, we completely wrecked German's economy. And now it's been rebuilt instantly within a day. Wow, once again, it's like nothing even happened. Like nothing happened at all. Nothing at all. Okay, I'm going to change my production around a little bit here. I'm going to hold shift and left click on the new production line and assign trains. I held shift because it assigned it to the top. If I clicked it, it would have put it on the bottom. It just saves me a click. Why not, right? We'll put one mill onto trains and this will produce five a year. However, when the production efficiency goes up, we'll produce probably one a month, something like that. So you get like 12 to 15 a year, something like that. Also, we're going to maybe have a little bit more support equipment assigned onto support equipment. More mills onto support equipment. Yeah, that's right. That makes sense. What we're going to do is deploy these guys early and then just keep training new ones. So holding shift, training new ones. 
and then have a little peek into logistics and get an idea what I need the most equipment for. And it does look like it's infantry equipment. Yeah, it is. Infantry equipment is what I'm the lowest on. I think what we'll do is we'll get rid of the engineers. We can always assign it back on and remove it for now, just so we can build up a surplus of support equipment because we are going to train the equipment we've got to go as high and as powerful as possible for now. We're going for a really relatively simple build. So I'm just going to focus on excavation, building our production up, and just kind of building our economy as up as much as we can in the short term. Okay, political power. We're going to go for the democratic guy. Uh, where is he? Democratic reformer. Yeah, we'll go for that. Once again, we more, need more ideology. We need 40% support. So we need to make sure we stack it as high as it possibly can go. And the more anti-communist rage, which feels really counterintuitive, the fact that we went for this guy. Maybe we should have gone for this guy a little bit later. Eh, mistakes were made. More research. More excavation. So what this does is it gives 10% resource gain, meaning every state within Germany, you go into the resource map mode, which is F8, you gain 10% more resources out of every resource that you're producing within your country. Only the base resources, not the ones you gain from like synthetic refineries only applies to raw materials of course that gives you a substantial amount of steel because you only produces a lot of steel to start the game as he does all right uh queue up some more civvies here now people are gonna ask me why aren't you building in these regions well later on these are going to be built up by the autobahn and they're going to go to 100 percent construction and i want to benefit from most from the construction bonus by having the maximum amount of construction bonus so what's the point of building them now when they get less than 100 percent? there is no point so in that case i'll just wait for the 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 construction to finish denmark is offering us a trade deal now this is actually really good it eats into our consumer goods but it gives you more supply efficiency and more supply range and i think that's a net win overall a win-win situation so i'm gonna do that all right we've rebuilt the economy which reduces our consumer goods to practically zero have a look in yeah, minus 50 percent the way they've changed consumer goods now it's really difficult to get almost zero consumer goods it has uh, diminishing returns over time anyway national focus we can build a better Germany. Yeah, let's build a better Germany. New and better Germany. New more divisions and deploy them. What I want to keep an eye on is what I'm needing the most of. And I think one of the issues we're going to run into is we're going to be low on artillery and we're also going to be low on infantry equipment. What I'm going to do is take two mils off this. And that means we no longer have a resource penalty. I see that. And then maybe take one off support equipment and then one off anti-air as well. It'll make more sense when you see the division template that I'm aiming for. And with that in mind, you can be like, ah, oh, I see what Dave's doing. And therefore, it all makes sense. It's all part of the plan. Anyway, what I'm also going to do is delete these. And we'll say we'll make another... We're going to go 48 because that's two army sizes. So in this case, it'll be eight. And then one, two, one, two, three. And then we'll prioritize this one. So all new equipment will go into these divisions and the other ones, these ones will actually get trained. I just want to deploy as much physical manpower I can to the map for where later on I can actually start to action things. Does that make sense? Fan Prussian militarism. Fan. I'm a fan of Prussian militarism. Press one in the chat if you're a fan of Prussian militarism. Well, we all are today anyway. We've got the option to increase trade with Denmark. Now, my advice is every time I've clicked this, they always say no. So what I'm going to do is increase relations with Denmark and see them and make them say yes to that and you know i just want to give it a shot it once again it increases consumer goods but it makes your supply efficiency and range more effective that's right danish bacon makes supply more efficient yeah that's right denmark type two in the comments if you love denmark i mean who doesn't love denmark come on come on anyway support equipment logistical companies very important it reduces supply usage more supply meanings you can put more supply onto the front line and that means more firepower so overall logistics are a straight up win all right we've built another dispersed industry and that means we've not got the maximum amount of slots anymore so what i can do is hold shift and control and click each of them and then shift the ones at the top that are partially constructed once again i'm building the maximum amount of factories in my state that i actually physically can which is a straight up win i'm definitely going to do that so we need 40% support of democracy before we can select the monarchist compromise. I'll be totally honest with you guys. This is probably the least efficient path, way or method of doing this. Going for this communist guy early was a big mistake. Hey, it is what it is. Right. Bulwark against Bolshevism. Oh, that's a lot of boo 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 in one word, right? Okay. This makes the Soviet Union very mad, very, very mad. But it is what it is. The United Kingdom is going fascist. Very interesting. France looks like he's going communist. This is opposite day. 
All right, artillery is done. And now we can pump out the best of the best artillery, which is definitely going to have a lot more soft attack potential. We're producing so many per day. It's, uh, it's definitely paying itself back in the long run. Okay, we're going to focus now on just raw soft attacks. I'm going to go for these bonuses under infantry equipment. These are passive bonuses, meaning they take effect immediately. And I'm going to use the Mayo for that to fund my uh, industry. To fund my Mayo traits. You know, even when I say it out loud, it doesn't sound right to me. Class conflicts divide the, the German junta. That's really bad for me because that's not the ideology that I want. And that gives me 33%. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we might have to switch out the communist guy for the, the liberal journalist. Okay, I'll admit, guys, mistakes were made in this campaign. And it looks like Italy is having a civil war. And uh, I presume they've gone for the democratic path. This is all new to me, by the way, guys. I don't usually play um, uh, Germany on a historical path. What Paradox has done, which I think is super smart, is they put alternative ideological routes in for everyone around the world based upon if Germany changes what path they go for. So it's basically thrown off the balance of power. It does look like... I don't know what path they've gone for, though. It looks like this is the player, the Republican alien. It looks like they're about to lose and then get a generic focus tree. Uh. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, liberal journalists gives more democratic support and political power, and that's the one we're going to go for. And we're also going to focus on getting some more soft attack out as well. We're also going to rush Disperse 3. Hmm, do I want to do that? I'm not sure. We're running out of things to research, to be fair. Okay, I think we're going to go for armored trains because we're not focused on an air force. And if I go for a no air build, I need a way of defending my logistics. And this guy's armor, meaning more resistant to logistical strikes. An air attack, meaning it can shoot down planes in the event of when they're doing logistical strikes, so definitely pays itself off in the long run all right there's no more focuses to select for the time being until we get the monarchist compromise how far are we away from that surprising we're going incredibly slow once again the, the communist guy has not done us any favors here okay logistics one's done we could do logistics two once again we've run out of things to research again i think we're going to rush engineer two because it unlocks flame tanks and flame tanks give a lot of attack attributes for different train types so it tends to pay itself well, really well in the long run well the uh Italian democracy was very short-lived. It doesn't look like it's going to last. Yep, that was incredibly brief. And welcome to the generic focus tree. Oh, no, they've been given back the regular focus tree. Oh, okay. And now Italy has an interesting name. The Republica Socially Italiana Nananas. Oh, really? Seriously? I don't like it when they have localized names. I mean, if you're going to have a name like all English names and then have different idol... I don't know. It, it, listen, it's just, once again, they've... He's a very sensitive man. He gets upset by certain things sometimes, but it seems really strange to me how they would have localized names for certain countries, but then German military junta is in English. Does anyone feel that's kind of strange? No, maybe it's just the monarchist compromise. Doo -doo -doo. Boom. And this is the democratic path for Germany. Okay, so we boost relations. Can we improve trade with Denmark? And they say yes. Yes. Well, between our countries will break this deal and the reason why i've done this is denmark usually falls to the germans so i feel to myself like why not take advantage of some extra free bonuses you know that i wouldn't usually be able to take advantage of you know feels like a win i don't know why i never want to do that anyway what i'd like to do now is switch out this democratic guy with the communist guy again which once again in later in the video it'll make sense why i'm doing this which i'll i'll show later on building some more sieves more soft attack bonuses uh more divisions we need another 24 of you 24 yep find those boys out all right everything's looking pretty good and the production is looking pretty fine this is an event that happens that can reduce your consumer goods i have a feeling though my consumer goods are so low this is not going to make any difference so we've currently got nine sieves being eaten by consumer goods if i go for this one it goes from nine to nine reducing consumer goods is no longer as strong as it used to be all of them don't pay off as well as they used to so it makes me even question sometimes if you're on uh the one of the lower mobilization laws it makes me wonder if it's even worth it when you reach that point that's kind of sad in a way because reducing consumer goods was one of my little fun little things i used to do it's kind of like my little my little thing that i don't know sometimes we, we're into different things okay the great red menace all right so what does this mean? Basically, the Soviet Union becomes the new bad guy of World War II. And, and because of that, you there form a coalition of communists and government. Interesting. Uh, you form a coalition against the Soviet Union. 
Uh, let's go for Communist Revolutionary, which we're going to go for. Which, once again, will make sense as time goes on. Anyway, uh, yeah, the Soviet Union becomes the bad guy. And therefore, you need to stop the Soviet Union doing what they need to do. I'm going to go for an agency and build up a spy network in the Soviet Union so I can see what national focus they're doing. And it'll give me an idea of how to react to them. I'm going to change on to the armored trains now. These are very expensive, by the way, so they'll build very slowly. But luckily, I think we'll be able to make enough just to keep a trickle amount in to keep our production of our economy going. Hopefully, anyway. Right now, we're running out of things to research. Again, I guess improving our NTR, I guess. All right, boom, we have a spy agency. So spy agencies will generate a spy every 28 days. If you get five upgrades, you get two spies. And there's also a third option that if you get a, an, a militia gentleman, you get a third spy. And also you get one plus spy for every major power that's a part of your faction if you go for a spy master and also when you build intel if you get enough intel on the civilian economy you can go here and it will tell you what national focus they're going for by right clicking it we have no intel on them right now so we don't know what their, their national focus for their nation actually is so at the moment I'm kind of blind to where everything's going to close that so i don't click it all right i think we're going to make some mills now actually yeah i think we're going to make some mills i don't really want to build in the autobahn region though i think we'll just pop those there and then there yeah what upgrades I usually go for for the spy agency is S pills because it reduces the chance of getting captured, which is usually a good thing. Interrogation is pretty good. If you capture someone, you get a bunch of intel for that. Localized trading centers is usually pretty good too. I probably should have gone for that first, actually. I think we'll go for that one second. It's very expensive, localized trading centers, but it lets you uh, have double agents and that allows you to uh, gain a network and build a network faster because you've got ones of that specific ideology. Which again, it'll make more sense when I show it later on. Anyway, the Central European Alliance. Basically, you're forming some kind of NATO before NATO, I guess. And uh, you allow people to join that faction. Anyway, Germany. I mean, so the Soviet Union. I tried to pop up that period. I clicked it away really quickly. I think you just basically said that the Soviet Union is now going to have a more aggressive stance against the world because we're clearly turning our back on any form of communism or socialism. Doesn't seem that way though. Hmm. Okay, well, each to our own, I guess. We're gonna work on the passive bonus again for the artillery. Once again, it's way ahead of time, but we're running out of things to research. The beauty of when you don't research a great different broad amounts of technology in Hoi 4 is you can start researching things ahead of time and get a bigger uh, advantage over the AI. Uh, the AI tends to play in a very one dimensional way where it kind of just researches stuff if it's in that era. But if you go ahead of time, you can get some insane attack bonuses over the AI and make them significantly weak. Okay, we're fo f finishing the localized training centers. We don't need to go for any decisions now. I guess we're just kind of waiting around. We can deploy some more divisions, which we'll do very shortly. I guess I'll deploy them here. The localized training centers, now if we go into decisions, we've got the option with every country to hire a local spy, a double agent for that nation. And then we're going to press X and sign that spy into that said region. We still need four more upgrades though because that's how we get the extra plus one spy and you need more than one spy because if this spy gets captured there's no one that can save this spy that's right you need a spy to save a spy from prison it's an annoying mechanic i really don't like it but it is what it is anyway civilian industry then we can find out what uh what they're going for all right assign these new divisions on i think we'll exercise them to level three i'm also going to select the field marshal and double click on motorized priority <laughs> this gives more supplies you can see the little trucks next to the supply depots but it does eat into your train and motorized so just be aware of that you'll notice that the, the amount of trains you've got will drop significantly keep an eye on it it's important deploy these boyos and we'll assign them onto here and we'll exercise everything up to level three the hold shift left click on here will exercise to level three and then they'll automatically stop army department is next a central european alliance if you go on factions map mode which is f10 you can see the faction so we've created a faction with ourselves and nobody else that's right it's not really a faction or an alliance if you're the only one in it right hmm? doesn't seem quite right anyway what you're gonna go for now is kind of important because it will determine who you're gonna defend so you have the option to get austria czechoslovakia and hungary into your alliance Yugoslavia and Romania, the Low Countries, Scandinavia, and then Baltic, Poland, and Finland. Yeah, we'll go for the Scandinavian membership. The yeah, Soviets ramp up military production because it's almost like they feel that their borders are being compromised. What I'm also going to do is right click on the Soviet Union, just check if they're justifying in anyone. It doesn't appear that they are. It suggests they've got bad relations. Australia has declared independence. I'm getting confused now. Did I turn historical off? Oh, they declared independence because Britain has gone fascist. <laughs> okay. It's really bad, isn't it? Whatever ideological path, copy this, fascist, or monarchist, you go as Britain. They always declare independence, isn't it? All the, the Commonwealth. 
It's very strange. An independent India in 1938. Ooh. Our industry is looking really hot right now. I'm actually really happy with how it is in 1938. Looking pretty good. Okay, what I'm also going to do is boost relations for Scandinavia. So what is classed as Scandinavia? So it's Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. And I'm going to boost relations because I've noticed from my test run on this that it improved the chance of them joining my faction. So I'll do that. You see this number getting big here? It basically means I'm getting better relations with them. All right, another army. 24 of you. Yeah, why not? Deploy them and then assign them automatically onto the field marshal. So just to break down what I'm doing here, these events are not applicable. I trained 24 divisions, hold shift click click to add them to the queue. Then I tell them to deploy when they're done here. Then I also said low priority, meaning equipment goes to these armies first. And then I also said that when they're deployed, the order they'll assume will be doing what this field marshal does, which is this color. If I change this to white, white, or kind of a gray color, actually. You see it's gone gray now. And that means that they will automatically do the garrison job jobby in this location does that make sense so germany has asked sorry soviet union has asked for control of this eastern territory which i think that's what they always ideologically do in the event of uh, the eastern block forming does that make sense eastern block is it an eastern block yeah it is an eastern block like well, central european block no hang on central european alliance block boom denmark says yes norway says yes finland says yes and they're all in the faction now if we go into faction map mode you can see that the gray faction has expanded kind of hard to make out because the, the lead of the faction is the same color as the faction so we're gray and we're on gray gray on gray it's hard to see right definitely a, a graphic design failure anyway next up i think we're going to go for finland or poland what do you think i think poland's for the win here and improve relations with poland max out that relations you need to keep an eye on the soviet union now from my test runs they start to justify and attack people at this point but we'll see how things go we'll see start working on soft attack and we'll also start to convert everything over to more of an ideal division template honestly hand on heart we weren't going to stick around this forever so what i'm gonna do is select this and duplicate it i'm going to call this rt for 10k likes oh my goodness dave this is original change it to a different icon make it elite which basically just means this equipment will go to this division first over everyone else and then we'll add on artillery and support and recon am i happy with this yeah look at the amount of soft attack it does now it's doubled the amount of soft attack that is massive and then i convert all of you guys onto this division boom have we got enough artillery though yes we do oh i'm so prepared i'm so prepared i'm proud of myself i'm giving myself a, a hypothetical pat on the back exercise to level three also we're going to hire the infantry expert and also we're going to hire the artillery specialist and anyone else no anybody else no okay we're going to press s to split on these to divide them into 24 stacks i'm going to put an army here because of course, we already connected that front line, so why not? Rommel is going to lead the charge here. I'm just trying to divide them up here. And my division skills aren't very good. There you go. Sign the general. If you want to coordinate them for the maximum amount of attack, go for it. I'm really surprised a lot of these generals weren't part of the the end party. I'm, I'm, I'm almost swear that Albert Kassering was a N word. That sounds even worse. We'll just say Nazi. Brady was a Nazi. But surprisingly, he survived. Oh, maybe because I chose to put them in prison. No, no, that's not true. That's not true. No, 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 that's not true. We'll come back to that later, though. We'll come back to that later. Okay, Soviet Union is justifying on no one. No, okay. Just keeping an eye on them, right clicking on them, and you'll see on here if they're justifying in anyone. Communists in government improve relations with the Soviet Union. That's actually kind of interesting. We're 49% for communism now. Man, that's going up so quickly. Anyway, next up, logistics. Pop logistics on. Next up, add logistics onto you reducing supply by a hefty amount that's good and then to top it off what else there's something else i'm not oh yeah armor so the best armor the best bang for your buck is a medium flame tank now light tanks work but the stats aren't as good but to be fair it's not the stats it's the terrain traits that play the biggest factor um, heavy tanks have good stats too but they're more expensive look at the production cost difference 2.48 3.6 and 12.8 so the, the sweet spot is medium so we'll go for a light turret We'll flap a flamer on it. We'll assign it as a flamer. Glad it is a Mayo. Reduces production cost. Yeah, why not? And then we'll give it a turret. Save. Gives production cost. Mm, yeah, sure, why not? Sign those on. Produce. Go, go, go. Gonna make a bit more motorized as well. Oh, no, we don't need motorized. What am I saying? 
And then off we go. We'll add the flame tank on immediately. There's no more messing around. Add it on. And if you hover over it, you can see what it's doing here. Can you see that? So attack on rivers, 10%. Amphibious, 10%. Fortress, 10%. Urban, 15%. Jungle, 15%. You can see all the terrain bonuses are worth their weight in gold. It's definitely worth Add it on immediately. And you're probably thinking, well, we don't have the equipment for this. We'll make the equipment for this. Trust me, we'll catch up. Soviet Union, not just justifying on the Baltics or Finland? No, no, okay. Okay, we've got the option now to make more mills. So we're going to do that immediately. Well, don't worry, we'll start working on industry at some point. It feels like we've neglected the industry part of the focus tree for the entire game. We will come back to that. All right, another upgrade for the spies. It will go for interrogation and we'll also become a spy master, which gives us a plus one spy. Which probably takes a guess that Sweden's a major power. And that's why we gain the plus one spy. Can we see their focus yet? No. We to know what focus we're going for. We need I'm trying to read this right now. There's so much big tool tip. There you go. Active national focus 70%. It took me ages to read that. Yes, yeah, so you need 70% intel to be able to read what national focus they're doing we're quite a long way away from that but eventually we will find out and we can also look at who they're justifying on which will give us a bit of an idea as well i'm kind of tempted to uh guarantee finland yeah i'm gonna do that poland good relations would you like to join our alliance yes yes and finland has been attacked by the soviet union man the timing on that is impeccable join the faction and to top it off as well what we're also going to do is get the baltics into this membership too boom 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 yeah we're good to go and i'm going to attack and i'm going to absolutely demolish the soviet union the soviet union in the mid game the mid part of the game is insanely weak insanely weak they suffer from all these hefty penalties on their armed forces their armed forces are absolutely dog poo at the very start of the game superior firepower yeah i think so yeah superior firepower the most superior of the firepowers and what we're going to do now is we are going to attack i'm going to make a field marshal front line here pop you boys on here i'm going to bring poland into the war so we even like to lend leases guns i'm presuming yeah they are yeah okay this army feels a bit redundant at the moment but i'll still keep exercising still keep training it what I'm doing is I'm shift left clicking. I'm trying to make an encirclement on them here. I'll do S here and then move them here, then here, and then try and just get around the back of them. But as you can see, they're absolutely demolishing their front line. So it's going really well. I'm also going to sign them on to Rommel and Z and X for close air support and air superiority. Also, what I'm going to do is naval invasion support. Oh, they're attacking the Baltics as well. Let's improve relations. They will not join our faction because they're already in a faction. They have joined our faction. I guess we just guarantee everyone then. Are we just the big guarantor of Europe here? Yeah, I think we are. And for some reason, Rommel's on his own army. It does no point. Just assign it onto the main part of the army. And then delete key. Click and delete them. And attack. And be aggressive. Go, 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 go. So what I did here is naval invasion support. Now, one little hidden thing about naval invasion support is it automatically will do shore bombardment. So manually, you'd have to put them on hold position and move them to the Gulf of Finland. But if you look really closely here, shore bombardment is happening. It's reducing their breakthrough or their defense, depending if they're on their attack or the defense, by 10.6%, which is pretty massive. And we are now the defender of the Baltics. And straight away, everyone is uh, automatically joining our faction because we're guaranteeing. And straight away, another faction. And all of that was kind of pointless because everyone's in our faction now. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to select a national focus for a little while because I want to bank political power. I need to be able to improve relations because I want to get more and more people into my faction. I usually don't care much about factions. I think factions are kind of annoying in Hoi 4, but in this one instance, they're actually kind of useful, so why not? All right. Um, another spy from the Soviets. Yeah, we can do that by decision. Open new decisions. You can do that. New spy. Assign it here. When we get new spies again, we'll assign them on, add them on, and go from there. Something about Iceland. What happened to Iceland? Iceland. Oh, it's joined our alliance. Okay. And they're kind of quasi independent now. So, an option here for an encirclement. So, I'm going to take it. So, I'm going to shift and then right click and just shimmy around the front line. I wouldn't usually do this, but there's an opportunity for, for an encirclement. And I'm, I'm like, wait, why not? And there you go. I'm encircled against the front line. Nice. Also, I see that I'm winning, but I'm not just, just winning by a little bit. I'm winning by a massive amount. So, I'm going to hold control and press b and they're going to railway to the front line meaning that they're going to get into position quicker so i can start striking them harder i don't want them to organize i want them to basically i don't know in this circumstance kind of like hold hold themselves back and get not give them time to build up 
So therefore, they're in a more of a, a sorry state, if that makes sense. Inventory expert. I'm almost certain this doesn't affect generals. No, it doesn't. So I don't think this is really applicable for what I'm trying to do. What I'm going to do is select this army, insert it into this theater, and then put it on low priority. What this means is equipment will go into this army first before it gets fed into this one. Then we'll auto assign it onto here. You know it's here we're having a fuel problem i think it's the flame tanks and the air force that's doing that but do you know what it's not actually that bad that i actually want to care about it no at the moment i don't care about it it's just not enough to be to worry me anyway more soft attack more guns request lendlies from sweden request it from denmark denmark got guns denmark guns not many but some uh, request lendlies from norway Norwegian neutrality has been broken. And Poland too, maybe? Oh man, everyone's giving us the guns. Give me all the guns. Well, once again, another opportunity for encircle here. Take it. I'm basically just selecting a bunch of divisions. Shift and right clicking. I wouldn't usually do this, but I know that I'm winning a lot. So I realize in this case, like, what's the point? I, mean, I might as well make encirclements when it's easy and the supply is good before getting encirclements deep into Soviet territory, which is going to be a little bit more difficult. And the spy has been captured. Once again, these mechanics in Hoi Fall, I detest them in so many different ways. But we're doing an operation. We'll commence it. It'll cost us 200 guns. We'll prioritize the guns for the operation. I'm not happy, Bunny, but it is what it is. All right, encirclement opportunity here. Another opportunity to push northwards. A bit of a small encirclement, but you know what? I'll take it. No, there was no encirclement. Oh, but these guys are pushing forward. Okay, no, that's all right. We have another opportunity to push further forward. And that's an encirclement. I'll take that. Class divides within Germany. So be careful here, because you hit 60% communism. You have an auto civil war. I kid you not. Once again, you're probably still confused. You're like, what is Dave doing here? It'll make sense in a bit. Anyway, Dubian membership. So Austria, would you like to join our faction? And as well as Czechoslovakia and Hungary. Improve relations to sweeten the deal We've got another spy now we'll assign that on and the spies are so far away from each other in the soviet union it's so frustrating it's, you can't put them close to each other to take advantage of the spy network bonus and once again it's one of those mechanics of hoy that i've never been a big fan of but spies do give decent bonuses so they are kind of worth it so there you go all right we're close to the front line in a few areas here so what i'd like to do is just beeline to these supply depot regions to be fair actually we're not actually that close to most of them. But we'll push forward anyway to put ourselves in more of a defensive posture. Okay, armored trains were behind on at the moment. That's a problem. So what I'm going to do is just assign five mils onto armored trains. I can see there's an improvement for artillery, giving more breakthrough. Yeah, why not? If I look into logistics, our uh, guns are behind by 67 days. You can find that out by just hovering over them and it gives you an idea. So you know what I want to do? I want to deploy these, but then I'm going to convert them into a crappy horses so this is a bit confusing to wrap your head around this one so i realized most of the guns are going to be needed for the front line but what i'm going to do is create a division that is going to be used for two reasons one it's for garrison template and two it's also something i'm going to use just as a template division that i can convert into something else later on and that just means that all of the main equipment now gets reinforced into the main army and therefore gets used on the battlefield where it's actually needed. Ooh, interesting frontline opportunities here. We are kind of breaking them. The 6-2 is complete. I guess I could add recon on, why not? Proving truck production. That's interesting. Trucks are something that we're producing a lot of. Proving our doctrines too, extra defense. What I'm trying to focus on is going for this doctrine, the one that improves uh, soft attack for our line artillery. And that's what well, we've got a lot of because we've kind of gone for a 7 2 style build. We'll go for improved anti air. Realize we're in a position here we can make an encircle on Rostov. Rostov, famous for reasons. It's reasons that make Stalin very angry. And this is an interesting one. So when you capture this city, you have an option to hire a bunch of divisions for Germany. I don't think when you're fascist, when you're not fascist anymore, you get the option to do it. Ireland would like to join our faction. You know what? I'm going to say yes. Central Europe? Are you joking me? I didn't expect that. And I wasn't prepared for that. That puts us at war with Britain. What? Okay. Okay, I'm going to move these extra horse divisions here just to hold the Crimea Peninsula. I, I don't really want to defend it. That's the reason why I punked those guys there. I just want to put some divisions here to prevent them from coming back. I don't really want to be involved in this, but this one Polish division is trapped. I don't want to help him out. All right, front line. How's it going? Czechoslovakia and Austria say yes. Did the Hungary not get asked? I guess not. Oh, it's this one. Oh, this is Yugoslavia and Romania. Okay, we'll do them all. Why not? I'm playing uh, 
playing Pokemon here, guys. I'm trying to catch them all. I kind of want Ireland to capitulate before I join the war. Now, is my faction at war with Britain? Yeah. Shit. That's not what I want, but whatever. Whatever. I guess we are... We're going to be the liberators of the Irish. What an interesting timeline, boys. Got the option to improve, improve, improve our infantry equipment by spending 5 XP. Reliability is not the first option, but I'm assigning some of these onto my flame tanks. Also get a little bit more trains out. Having low supply is really bad for me, so I'm going to try and fix that immediately. Turkish portfolio is not something I care about at the moment. Romanian oil is something I do care about. Iranian oil. Ah, that's something that I want. And now we can make him positive oil, so that's definitely a win. I think what we're going to do now is convert you guys into the artillery division and just uh, assign the equipment onto it. The Austrian pro-German sentiment soars. It's a German solution was a mistake. Is this going to fire a referendum and me annex Austria? <laughs> it's so random. Anyway, queue up some more mills. The unification of the German states. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to delete them, though. Yay. Oh, man, they've got some amazing infrastructure, too. Okay. We're just building those regions. There we go. Opportunity to connect the lands up here. Yeah, do it. Once again, when you've got limited divisions on the front line, you always want to prioritize connecting up the front lines. It's important that because it means that the more firepower you've got over a short uh, front line, the more possibilities you can actually do damage and make extra front line pushes. So an example, if I close this southern Kuban front here of the, of the Caucasus Mountains, it means it liberates these areas to put more divisions on it. And right now we're having no problems connecting the front lines. Everything is going silky smooth. Can I get a spy from the Soviets? No, no. Oh, that's really interesting. I've got the options for governments in exile. <laughs> it feels weird, but whatever. A linguist. I'm going to assign all the spies. I'm pressing just pressing X here to assign them into locations. So I can just assign them at lightning speed. It's really funny that they're not closing this pocket here, isn't it? We're having a bit of a supply problem here. So I'm just spread them out a little bit. One of my spies got killed. The random RNG. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. What a waste of XP. You bastard. Okay. mistakes were made okay normally what i normally do is i go for that path because this one's a bit of a no-brainer like it just gives straight up org and soft attack bonuses which is a really good thing to do in this one instance it's not really applicable because i wanted to try something different sue me eh? how dare you try something different dave pick the same strategy every game anyway i also went for this one too smoke and fire this is the unique one for superior firepower and it gives five percent breakthrough so why not right and to top that off as well why not select the preferred tactics Suppressive barrage. Yeah, why? That just costs command power, though, so just be aware of that. Dubian expansion. And they've joined our faction. And unfortunately, Hungary is now an island. We do the low countries as well. Should we do that? Low countries? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, why not? Yeah, there is a chance, sometimes a really high chance, that they will join this faction when you select the national focus. But if you want an almost certainty that they will join, uh, boost relations. See, what we're going to do here is this button. Now, this is a button that very rarely gets used. And in all fairness, I'd recommend not using this too frequently because I think it does kind of mess you around sometimes. What this basically does is it consolidates your divisions and merges them together to try and get whole full strength divisions. And I'll show you right now. And as they move together now, divisions will disband, but they'll merge their equipment up. And see, we've gone from... That was so not worth my while. 24 divisions down to one. See, the best way of doing this, in my opinion, is try and just select half of the divisions and merge them together. But when it, it merges all the divisions into one, that's just really wrong. That's not how it should work. No, that, that was actually kind of awful, that paradox. What were you thinking? All right, we're low on fuel again. So more Iranian fuel. And spies again. See, this is kind of micro-intensive. I feel like I want to focus on the battles. I want to focus on winning wars. But having to reassign spies over and over again, it's not my favorite mechanic. Am I moaning? Is this is this game becoming a moan track for feedback game? Okay, I'll not mention spies again. I promise. I promise. I promise. All right. Conquest of the Caucasus has gone incredibly well. Once again, if you know you've won, just beeline to the victory points and beeline to the supply depots. I think Baku is the last one. You know, the fall of Baku. Now we have no oil problems because this sweet oil is sorting us out. Do we have control of this state? No, we don't. It's controlled by Poland. Shit. There we go. Now we have control of it. We'll go local police force and assign the, the horse division. We're not getting oil from here yet? 98 oil. Still doesn't seem to be enough oil to keep the armed forces um, stocked. Anyway, frontline closed. 
B to railroad to the front line. Off you go. Bit of confusion here. I'll just explain what I just did then. So I wanted to select a occupation law that didn't hurt my uh, my equipment or my manpower by a significant amount. And to find that sweet spot, usually local police force or military governor, governor is that middle sweet spot. Now, however, if you want to build compliance, the best one in the game is local autonomy. That's only for democracies. And civilian oversight is a close second. But then a third option, which isn't the best, is local police force as well. But it won't, it'll gain compliance significantly slower. When it comes down to it, you, you've only really got a few options. Uh, but if you do want to get resources, I think I might have to go for the harsh quotas, actually. You could do that by selecting the state manually and then changing it. Do we have control of this? This is the way this appears is it appears in a way that I don't have actual full control of it because I don't control that bottom province. No, I don't have control over it. I thought I didn't. There you go. Now I have control of it. Then I can select the occupation laws and you can see that one there. Oh, it's this one. Forced labor plus 40% local resources. Boom. And that is going to give us a massive amount of fuel. I can cancel my imports from Iran and I'm still making fuel. Yep. 53 fuel. Nice. Also, infantry expert gives 10% attack. Definitely worth it. So assign that onto the uh, the generals when the option appears. What's the size of my alliance now? Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at this. And finally, it only took 10 billion years, but we're actually going to focus on our industry now. It's 939. The war has kicked off, but we're actually focusing on our industry. How awesome is that? Never too late, right? Really simple, this, guys. I'm going to put everyone on the front line, get everyone into position. And uh, I'm going to activate the battle plan when I've got enough uh, command bonus. And that's it. If I have someone close to the front line here that I have a supply depot, I am always going to push for it. Because once again, if I'm in a position where I control a supply depot, have I told the entire army to go? Yes, I have. You press H to cancel your order any time. If you're near a front line, there's an there's a option for a supply depot. Communists in government. Oh my goodness. And once again, I don't want to go over 60% support for communism because it will fire a civil war. I don't want that to happen. Anyway, yeah, we're pushing on Kazan here. There's a supply depot here. But if we're in a position where we control the supply depots on the front line before we start an offensive, we're going to be in a position where we, when we attack, we're going to definitely be at a big advantage. Oh, there's one there as well. Right, yeah. All right, assigning spies on again. This is the fun part of the game, right? I love this. Fun. All right, I think we're in a spot now where we can push. I'm going to go full aggressive and I'll put them on aggressive stance. So just a heads up here, something that's a little bit confusing to a lot of new players is... Oh my god, more, more communism. Um, yeah, communism, that's a confusing thing, isn't it? Yeah, um, when you attack and there's a battle plan order, um, they will only follow the battle plan if they're on balance. However, if they're on aggressive, they'll just push the front line whenever there's an opportunity. Because sometimes you'll notice front lines will stagnate and not move. And it's because you need to put them on aggressive or make a new front line for that specific front line. And it'll just make sure the front lines do actually move and they are dynamic. As you can see, no one's moving here. And the reason why no one's moving is because they don't think they can win. Even though they can win, the AI has got it completely wrong. But as you can see here, as I push forward, I absolutely eradicate them. There you go, encircled. Encircled, encircled. Once again, another opportunity for a front line here and the supply depot. Right click, move. No. Tank production plus five percent. Why not? There's no, there's no plus five percent here for medium tanks as well. Better anti air. Yeah, why not? Look on logistics. What am I behind on? Motorize. That's not a big deal because. Oh, the Netherlands has capitulated. Oh, that's not good. Okay. Ooh, that's put us in a bit of a pickle. Because you have to pull off an army here, isn't it? I'm really curious to see if Britain has an alliance. So they have the allies. And it is Britain. Britain has its own alliance with itself. Okay, what we're going to do is an emergency is train a bunch of these horse divisions. And what we can do is convert them over as soon as we can. So what I've done is made a four bat line here by Z and just what C and then drawing the line and then pulling these guys off the front line, making sure the whole position and railroad all the way so we can get them in time. And in the meantime, the front line of these is going really well. And I think the Soviets are about to cap anyway. Yeah, they are. So what I could do is be a little bit more aggressive and look for victory points like these ones and just beeline to them. And the idea behind that is it's just basically make them make them surrender. As you can see, the front line here is completely destroyed. They've got no divisions anyway. Got perm here. Victory point here. Go here. Go here. Because what I want them to do is I just want them to cap. And then, then that's it. Oh, we've got loads of our boils arriving. Okay, never mind. I guess it was a false alarm overall. Go here. As you can see, dude, I'm doing Z, Z front line, just putting everyone on the front line, just moving everyone over, and then attack whenever needed. Meanwhile, 
Japan are making many gains. India, independent. United Kingdom at war with the Dutch. Uh, if I'm thinking long game here, it might be a better idea to make a, a crappy battleship. It's my strategy where I call it the armored battleship or the... No, it's not an armored battleship. What is it called? What do I normally call it, Dave? It's called the heavy bathtub. That's what I call it. The heavy bathtub. And this is the heavy bathtub strategy. It's basically a battleship that basically has nothing on it, but it's effective because it, it projects naval power really effectively. A little bit of that. There we go. I guess I could start but on, on auto key. Having this point now where I feel like we should kind of branch out by going for engines and then going for... So we're basically teching into a fighter aircraft, but then also making ships. As, as you can see right now, we reached that point in the game where I'm kind of massively branching out. I'm going to change our production around a little bit because I've noticed I'm a little bit behind on a bunch of equipment. I don't want to be behind on anti-air because anti-air is really crucial to maintain air superiority. We're getting bombed here. No, we're not. Okay. And that naval invasion by Britain was very, very brief. Meanwhile, the Soviet menace is dead. We were the biggest contributor of 78% contribution, meaning we practically get everything. Everything. I wish you could nicely divide up the Soviet Union with the land that you give them, but you can't. You can't. I'll take their navy and I'll get into a dispute with uh, Poland very shortly. I know what's going to happen here because I don't have the lion's share of the peace conference. I'm going to end up in a situation where the, the Soviet Union will still exist, which in all fairness is really rubbish, isn't it? I think at the moment with the new peace conference system, I think um, it is kind of better just to kind of do player led peace conferences because this is very messy and very click intensive. I felt like in the past it was a little bit easy to work with, but it was pretty exploitative in the past though. I will say that I kind of feel like we've traded an old system for a new system and the new system is pretty much got the same problems the old system has. But this is the easy way of doing it anyway. Pop, 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 pop. The usual easy method of doing it is you basically grab all the ports around the outside and then no one else can take stuff that's in the middle. That used to be an old strategy. I'm not even sure if it's even that applicable anymore. Oh, they've definitely taken like a highway in the center here. Oh, we've run out of points. We actually have run out of points. We've created basically hell on earth borders now, boys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh no, what have we done? No. I think the way it worked in the past is that if you had leftover points, it would always be assigned onto someone else. But I think with the current system, there aren't like points left over anymore. So if this is confusing for me, well, it's confusing for me as well. Unfortunately, this is the way it works. Basically, Poland and me had the most war score and we basically battled for land for the majority of um, the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union now still exists because I can't take any more points. Which I just feel, feel, personally feel like is a really bad system. But once again, I'm not here to have a big moan, all right? But the Soviet Union still exists and Stalin's still around. And Poland has taken some horrendous borders. Listen, just get it out in the comments, guys. Go on, get it out in the comments. Tell me how awful these borders are. I'm so sorry. Many tears were shed. But unfortunately, welcome to Hoi 4, boys. This is the way it works. Anyway, back into the game. Where are we? We're having issues with working conditions. We still at war with Britain? Yeah, we are. But luckily, it's not a very good alliance. We also have the option here to improve fighter production because we are so behind our enemy. We could go for that one later on. And we also have the option for communists on the rise, which is it's kind of wonky. Anyway, regardless, let's just play the game a little bit and get the political power up. Oh, Poland is... Denmark has cancelled our trade agreement. I guess it's a war thing, I guess. That really sucks, actually. Oh, that really sucks. Why have you got rid of the Danish produce? Oh, I feel really... I feel like me and you, Denmark, had a great relationship going on there, and you've just ruined it. I feel cheated and abused. Tossed out into the street. I feel, I feel meaningless. Anyway, pop our spies into Britain, get a little bit of a network on them, move all the boils back into Europe. Having a garrison, which is V, and just click it into them, and they're all maneuvering back into Europe. I think what we're going to happen now is we might have a little bit of a problem with garrisons. We're going to have to produce a little bit of infantry equipment. Yeah, I can see the garrisons going down. We're burning a lot of equipment from all the garrisons. It is what it is. In that case, the way we get around that is we have to go for invest into MPs. Then we also have to invest into proper, proper heritage. Then we make an unbelievably huge horse division. Are we still producing horses? Oh, we are because the, those are the ones we were making before, weren't they? Um, and horse, horse, horse. This is a free horse division now because we've got proper heritage. It's proper heritage is actually quite strong if you're fighting in core territory. Up, oh, there we go. Doesn't have any impact uh, uh, initially. Yeah, the difference is, is minute. Local police force. 
equipment still going down. Oh, actually, yeah, it's still going down. This is how you kind of manage garrisons, by the way. I'm giving you a bit of a, a heads up. I think we need to train another 23 divisions because we would like to have three complete armies. Realize right now, we don't have any manpower as well. But it's because it's all in garrisons, isn't it? Just delete that guy. See the manpower is ticking down. It's been eaten away and chewed away from garrisons. It's one of the issues that with democratic nations, you're not really meant to garrison territory. You're meant to make puppets because it's kind of easy to manage the micromanagement. Okay, open political discourse. We've got the ability to do that because we hire the communist guy and we can hold a referendum because we're over 50% ideology and we can flip to communism. So democracy is a crap. You, when no one's causing world tension, you can't justify it anyone. I think the only people we can justify it at the moment are Italy and Japan. Uh, because they're the only ones that have caused world tension. And then technically World War II is over. If we go communist, we have the option to uh, declare a war on anyone. And we still have our super faction. Even though they probably aren't going to be happy about our super faction um, when the war's over. But we'll see anyway. Yeah, I think we can delete this army because we need the manpower. Right now we are mad struggling with uh, manpower at the moment. We've got a few options though. Uh, we could mobilize more, which is probably a, a good sound option. We could also demobilize the economy a little bit to get that 3% recruitable back. But right now it's, it's having to deal with this resistance and the only real long-term solution is to uh, get your compliance up. But unfortunately, that has a big net loss to resistance is obviously becoming more and more of a problem. In the last 12 months, we've lost 24K, 25k manpower and 2.6k in production equipment. Class divides. Divide Germany. And now we're over 60% ideology. We'll have an event that's going to pop up very shortly. Let's give us the option to flip ideology. The German Republic? I don't think so. I seem to be losing trucks and I can't figure out where I'm losing them. I'm using trucks for motorized for here. There's no trucks being used here. It says I'm losing trucks. Communism on the rise. Boom. The Socialist Republic of Germany. Boom. We now no longer hate communism because we are a communist. And that means we are a leader of a faction now that is communist. And we formed it based on democratic means. Oh my goodness. Does this mirror real life? Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. It's up to, be, it's up to interpretation. Okay, I'm queuing up my miles here. Same again. I'm going to focus on an agility fighter. We can add rockets onto it later on if you want to do a little bit of ground support damage as well. Improving our guns. Improving our artillery. Some of these, when they improve reliability or breakthrough by very small amounts, it makes you question if it's even worth it. And you know what? Sometimes I even question that, you know. Right, we have a big fat navy now, and we can use that navy to do mass repairs. Yes, and then assign all the naval dot yards to do all those repairs. The Autobahn is complete, 100% infrastructure. It's so weird when you go democratic, because this is a really long time before your industry kind of, I don't know, starts to get going, you know? No fairness, if I'd planned this and teched into it in advance, I kind of would have gone for more of a light tank kind of build. Maybe I can do that now, and I can show you like the most ideal garrison template. Yeah, why not? So what I'm going to show you right now is the most ideal garrison template. It's basically just a basic one-man turret, heavy machine gun. Get the price down by going for the Mayo. Um, standardized production. No, we'll go for that one. I'm selecting the Mayo that gives the best bonuses, basically. Um, and then I'm going to produce a mass amount of uh, light tanks. I don't know where I'm losing motorized. I'm getting really confused by that. Am I producing something that needs motorized? No, I've not accidentally put them in garrisons, have I? No, I'm not. So Oh, I guess I'm using logistics, I suppose. Logistics uses, uses trucks, right? Someone in the comments is going to tell me. There's something I'm missing that's blatantly obvious that I'm, I've missed it by a long shot. Anyway, if I was to add on armored cars here, light tanks, this would incre increase the hardness to 16%, which is great because... Actually, are we even using this template? Is it this one? No, we're using this one. So I need to do that. Is it cavalry template one? Yes, it is. I'll shift that to the top because I keep losing it. Then what I do then is add on our light tanks because then it increases the hardness. And hardness is like raw defense against partisans. I need at least 8k tanks to do that. Oh, I'll work on that. But in the meantime, what I can do is add an MP on. And MP reduces the raw amount needed. So we gain a bunch of big refund to equipment and uh, manpower. I'm going to add on a bit more to light tanks. Produce those light tanks. Spit them out. feel like we're not producing enough... Uh, support equipment as well. I have a feeling if I attack France now, they're instantly going to join the Allies, aren't they? And then I'm going to have to have more land to garrison. And that's just going to cause more problems, isn't it? Alright, we're going to make a fighter now. And we're going to go as meta as possible. It's our biggest engine we can do. 
Uh, self sealing. And if I had range, I'd go for the range, but we don't have range for now. But we'll mark that as auto upgrade. And unfortunately, now we're going to have a massive problem with oil because we are producing none of that. How's the artillery doing? We've got quite a large amount of artillery. Very mumbling. And we can import rubber from friends of all nations. Yeah, we need to make synthetics now. Desperately need synthetics. Surprisingly, we're going to be building these inside of uh, Poland. Poland's happy about that, right? And to benefit from that, we need rubber from the synthetics. And I realize we've not gone for the construction tax in a billion years. We also go for coal liquefaction, which gives a research bonus to uh, the rubbers. Now the problem for resistance is getting a little bit better, which is good. Also, I have the option to select a policy for my artillery uh, and infantry equipment. What do we go for? Uh, ruthless contracts. It just gives increased XP so we can finish all the traits. That's the only thing I can think of at the moment. Reliability doesn't help me. I guess reducing the amount of resources required is nice, but we've got so many resources, we're never going to have a problem with that. Okay, we can make a collaboration government inside of Britain. You know what? That'd be more useful inside of France, wouldn't it? Mm. So the beauty of a collaboration government is they're pretty expensive. However, they increase compliance within that region massively. To be honest, I want four spies into France, but is there really enough time for that? I'm kind of already planning my next move anyway, so it feels a little bit too late, doesn't it? Okay, Field Marshal front line into France, and I can also do siege artillery to plow directly into the Maginot. Do I want to do that, though? Ah, why not? Why not? Living large, right? I don't have enough manpower, though. We're going to have to do service by requirement. I guess what I could do is ask someone for garrison support. Will anyone give it to me? It's a way of just gaining some manpower by using other people's manpower, but no one in my faction wants to do that. I don't know what the direct attributes and requirements are for that, so I can't explain why they're not giving it me. I don't know. It's all up to interpretation, I guess. Oh, Britain's trying to land. Denied. All right. Queuing up loads of refineries. And the sole reason for that is we need rubber desperately. And luckily, Germany gets synthetic rubber, which is plus two oil, rubber per refinery. So usually be plus one. Plus, on top of that, all these technologies are given an additional plus one. So t with all these included, it'd be plus five. But with Germany, it'd be plus seven. Oh, the Britain. Britain's landed again. The British are coming. Denied. But I did steal the Soviet fleet, which is going to come in handy, because that means our total naval projection is a lot lot higher than it would normally be probably still not high enough to take on the french and the british fleet maybe i should just naval invade them from the german mainland that might be a safer option actually in the air force they're attached onto the armies right now so i'll move them all back to the capital and they've arrived merge them up with g and exercise to level three and there's a few heavy fighters there might as well use those heavy fighters those are the ones we got from the soviet union weapons for the irish resistance Cost 50 political power, though. Do I really want to spend that? Nah. All right. Adding on some light tanks, son. So now we have a little bit more hardness as a part of our division. I'm tempted. Oh, I'm going to regret this to do... Oh, I can't do local autonomy because I'm, I'm communist now. Oh, I forgot about that. I was about to do local autonomy again. Alsace Lorraine. Plow into the front line. And siege artillery. And send in the air force. Off you go. I need Belgium to join. Are they going to join the Allies? Yes, they are. And off you go. Can I break the Maginot with pure power from the other side? No. Have they got disjointed government? They do, so they will still surrender if Paris falls and a few other cities. No, we did not break the Maginot. Oh my goodness. It all goes to Belgium. Seriously? It all goes to Belgium? Really? Anyway, next up, uh, naval invasion time. Pop, 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 pop. Let's see how well this goes. I'll assign the divisions on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is you can only assign 10 divisions on because that's like your fixed limit. So everyone gets, everyone else gets assigned on the front line to the south of it. But once again, I don't know if I'll have enough naval suppression to actually... Sorry, naval supremacy to do the naval image. You need at least 50%. If you hover over here with that F2, you can see I've got 36%. So I'm nowhere near where I need to be. I can reduce that by trying naval bombing this region. That's a possibility got two battleships that just finished so that's going to be handy but for the time being i don't have a strong enough air force to contest them that's going to be a problem in the short run we're getting bombed right now logistical strikes i'm going to put up my fighters to try and deny them a little bit but once again i don't want to put my fighters up in the english channel because i'll not be able to contest them anyway because their air force is superior to mine is america in this war no it is just britain i think they're the only major power as well yeah they are i think we're going to reach the point now where we've got too much rubber yeah we actually are I think we've, we've over-rubbered. Oh my goodness, we've really over-rubbered. And then the rest of it can be civvies. Cue them all up my holding shift. There you go. 
And we're going to be the probably the biggest robber producer in the world now. Oh, naval invasion by Bren! And denied. We'll let them land, because if they land, then I can push them back into the ocean, which is basically a free encirclement. They've even got marines as well. Royal marines! Denied. I love that Bren does continuous naval invasions against me and then gets pushed back into the ocean because that means there's less in, in divisions when I land in their homeland. How many divisions do they have? Ooh, they have quite a fair few. Okay. All right, I'm going to try a cheeky naval invasion here. And the way you do this is you've got your fleet up. Makes sense. Then I'm going to put all my air force here. And what happens is, is when you put your air force up, you get like a bonus to naval suppression, naval superiority. I keep saying suppression. I don't know, my brain just doesn't want to say that word right. And that will give us naval suppression, naval superiority of 55%, which means we can do the naval invasion. Okay, there we go. The way it works is you have a base amount of naval supremacy, and you can increase that further by having an air superiority bonus. Can you see that? Air superiority increases our ship amount by 63%. And there we go. We've got enough, and we're landing, and we're done. Nasty. Mean. Awful. All of the above. And I'm just going to push to the ports, the supply depots. Once again, it's doing two things. It's cutting them off. It's also giving supply for me. So it puts us in a really good spot. And there's any extra divisions. Move them onto the front line. Other army as well. Bring them over as well. Just be aware that you might get intercepted when you bring them over. But don't worry about it. End of the day. Uh, if you want to make an omelet, you got you to gotta break a few eggs, you know. Activate the battle plan, put them on aggressive, and off you go. See these guys getting locked in here. It's best to close the front lines here, because otherwise you don't want to have to come back to these at a later date. Keep pushing, keep going. The AI is reluctant sometimes, because the supply is low, and you sometimes have to manually say, keep moving, keep going. Your supply is good right now, you can do this. Otherwise, they'll stop attacking, because the battle plans don't think you can win. It's one of the reasons why naval invasions don't fail, don't succeed very often for the AI, because the AI just doesn't kick itself into gear and commit to the push as you can see now as we're moving forward we've got hull which is a different sea zone which means the supply situation is going to be a lot better now it should be a lot 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 better i'm going to shift and right click on glasgow and aberdeen too to make sure I just keep going keep going you can do this you can do it and okay, okay contribution i am the biggest uh am i the biggest 38%. It's that moment again where I feel like this peace conference is going to go really bad. I'm just going to take what I can take and then go from there. Basically spend all my points. Contest all the ones that anyone else wants. We also have the option to take one state in Oslo because, because somehow it's the catalyst for the civil war. I suppose the other stuff I've forgotten about is the overseas stuff. But do I really care about some of that? Take Ethiopia. Take Malaysia. Normally I'd, I'd care about Malaysia but I, my, all my oil needs have been taken care of. Take their navy. We're running out of points now. Don't really have that many points anymore. They're going to run out of points so everyone else can take the rest. Even though now there's probably still a France in the world. Yep, there's still a France because there wasn't enough points. And also United Kingdom probably still exists as well. Yep, because there wasn't enough points. <laughs> uh... All right, guys, I can tell that I'm moaning a lot. There's a lot of old man moaning going happening here. And of course, the peace conferences are happening. I'm really wonky at the moment whenever you're a part of a faction. And that's the reason why when I ever uh, conquer the world, I never join a faction because I always think peace conferences go really, really strange. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this democratic slash communist Germany as a super faction. Last time I changed the communist, they all left the faction. Well, half of them did anyway. And everyone has stayed in the faction. That's actually kind of insane when you think about it. But hey, you don't have to go communist. If you don't want to, you can invade Italy as well as Japan. And then the, the world is your oyster. Hey, this was actually kind of fun. I enjoyed this. Hey, if you enjoyed this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you enjoy this kind of content, you might want to like this one on screen as well. Give it a click. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.